Welcome back to Econ 104, Introduction to Macroeconomics. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at an example. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at a table and how to calculate GDP from this table utilizing the expenditure versus the income approach. Now, big thing I want you to keep in mind with this, right? A lot of people have trouble with this. A lot of people really dislike this. They roll their eyes. They go, oh my goodness, this is terrible to work through. Okay, I agree. This is... This is more accounting than economics at this point. It's figuring out, hey, which one of these variables fits into which category, um, categorizing the variables, and then adding them up. So, yeah, we can't do much analysis with it. It's not too interesting, but at the same time, it's expected. We need to know the differences between expenditure and income approach, and we need to be clear as to what is considered part of the expenditure approach, what is considered part of the income approach, and what isn't. And as such... Ah, unfortunately, it's just accounting, but still important, still relevant to the course on whole as we move on and get into some actual analysis. So let's jump over to our Blackboard. Let's take a look at an example and let's work through this. So here we go. We have a table listing a whole bunch of metrics for our economy. Some of these are of interest to us. Some of them are not. Some of them are even duplicated. That is, some of them are reported and then also reported again elsewhere. So we have to watch out for that. In order to help, let's start off by writing down for us the difference as to how we would calculate GDP through each method. So starting off, our GDP through our income approach, <clears throat> that has worked out to be gross factor payments, gross factor payments plus depreciation plus indirect taxes. And indirect taxes, I'll write underneath here, less subsidies. That is, we want just the net indirect taxes. Compare and contrast this, we have also our GDP through our expenditure approach. And the way you can remember GDP through the expenditure approach, as I've said a few times, this is really the big one we'll be utilizing a lot. You'll remember this one inside and out, but you can remember it as, well, as I do, it's kind of a weird monomic, Signex. That is C. I, G, N, X, Signex, right? Hopefully, hopefully that works. Hopefully that makes sense. Help it stick in a little bit. And what we have here is we have private consumption. So this is the consumption of all the private households, everybody in our economy, all their consumption, their purchases of new goods or services for final use in this year, right? And that's for final use. They're not going to resell it. They're going to utilize that. Investment. Keep in mind, in this case here, this is gross investment. So this is capital formation. This is private businesses, private firms, the amount that they end up spending on capital formation. Keeping in mind, including an investment, this is real estate, inventories, and the new purchase of capital, right? So new equipment, machinery, factories, etc. Now, in this case, it's gross investment. So that is all the new stuff we add plus the amount we spent on depreciated capital. So gross investment would be net investment plus depreciation if we had that if we had that separation going on here. G, this is government expenditure or government purchases. Sometimes if it's really tricky, you'll see this split up into government purchases on consumption goods and government expenditure on investment goods. That is, the government does buy some things as a final good or service to consume in that period, consumption good. The government also does engage in investment. That is, they create inventories, they buy real estate, they buy new machinery, tools, etc. All of that adding to the capital stock. So they sometimes get split up into government consumption and government investment, but typically you'll see it just government purchases or government expenditure. Finally, we're going to have net exports or our trade balance. That guy there, net exports, that is our value of our exports minus the value of our imports. So exports minus imports. Okay, 
Now that we have an idea as to what's included in each one, we just need to go to the table and we need to figure out categorically what we're going to include. So let's go back and do the income approach first and let's take a look at gross factor payments. So gross factor payments, this is going to include wages, profits, uh, rent, and finally interest income. So that's from your investments. Interest income. Okay, so let's go through our table and let's identify, I'll use red for our GDP from our income approach. Let's identify all of our categories that fit into this and then we can add them all up. So right away, we have rent here. Okay, so there we go, we have rent. What else do we have? Wages. Yep, yeah, we want wages. Gross investment? No. Exports? No. Private, or sorry, private price level? No, that's not down here either. Private consumption? Nope. Capital stock? No. Nope. Interest from investment? Hey, hey, that was interest from investment income. So we want this guy here. Okay. Total quantity produced? Yeah, no, don't need that. Labor share of income? No. Employment insurance? No, we don't need that either. Profits including rent? Well, we need profits, but here's the catch here. This is profits including rent. That is these two guys together. Well, that's problematic. We have rent already here, and then we have profits including rent here. So what that means is that we can essentially say, we can ignore that. We can say we don't need this category because that 55 is included in that 535. So it's already accounted there. What else do we have? Labor force? Nope. Government purchases? No, nah, that's not in there. How much money we have? No. Nope. Gap? No. Nope. Total? Nah, no. Nope. Imports? Not a chance. Depreciation? Oh, that one we need. There we go. Indirect taxes? That's up. Yep, that's one right there too. So we need that guy. Um, oh, subsidies, but hey, this guy's already less our subsidies. So it's already included in this. So in that case there, we have everything we need. So now all we need to do is we need to go through and we need to sum all of these values. So to do that, let's go 1163. 105, 535, 149, and 59. Okay, if we add all that up, what do we end up getting? We get 1163 plus 105 plus 535, add 149, add 59. We get GDP through our income approach as $2,011. So through our income approach, $2,011. Great. <clears throat> Let's go work through our expenditure approach. So expenditure, consumption, investment, government, and net exports. So going through, gross investment. Oh, no, let's not use the same color. Let's switch colors. Gross investment. There we go. I want that guy. Exports. Yeah, yeah, that was right there. Exports. I want that guy as well. No. Hey, consumption. Yeah, yeah. That, that's one that I want. That's consumption. No, 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 no. Ah, uh, no, no. These guys were already counted. Imports. Oh, exports minus imports. Yeah, I want that guy. It's going to enter as a negative though, but I still want it. Total whole factor. Yeah, no, we don't need that for anything. Capital share. No, we don't need that. No. Government purchases. That's one we need. That's G, government purchases. And then labor force, pro yeah, no, we're done. We have everything we need. So now, same kind of idea. We just need to sum all of those values. So what are we going to have? We're going to have, let's kind of keep it in our Signix order. So consumption is 10.10. Investment, uh, gross investment is 575. Okay. Government purchases is 400. Our exports are 2250. And our imports are minus 2225. 
So if we sum all of that, we're going to have 1010 plus 575 plus 400 plus 2250 minus 2225. And we get a GDP through our expenditure approach of 2010. So there we go. We have GDP through our expenditure approach. In this scenario here, I've contrived it to be the case such that, hey, these two are very similar. In reality, this is what we would see. We would expect no matter how we calculate GDP, we would get approximately the same result. The reason being is, hey, we're all measuring the same thing. We're measuring GDP just from different approaches. If we're saying, hey, income is synonymous with expenditure, well, they better be nearly the same. The reason for the difference? Well, the reason for the difference is statistical discrepancies, right? We're estimating a lot of this stuff. So there's some fuzz, there's some uncertainty, and that carries through into our final answer. Mind you, keep in mind in D2L, a lot of these numbers in the table are randomly generated. It won't be the case that your GDP expenditure, your GDP income are approximately the same. Due to the random generation, they could be drastically different. So don't use that as a check on our D2L quizzes. But in this case, just to show that, hey, in reality, they are often quite similar. Okay, so that does this for our example. If you have any questions about this, of course, please feel free to comment below, post on D2L, or reach out to me by email. Uh, what I want to do next is I just want to jump over to Statistics Canada. And if we jump over to Statistics Canada, we can take a look at an actual table showing real GDP for the expenditure account. So to take a look, right, we got second quarter of 2020, third quarter of 2020, and then percentage point changes as we go through. What we see is essentially, hey, there's final consumption expenditure. So that's C in that. And you see it's actually broken up. We see it as household final expenditure on goods, durable goods, semi-durable, non-durable, and services. We see nonprofit institutions serving households. General government final consumption expenditure, right? Remember I said, hey, sometimes we see government split up between consumption and investment. Well, here we go. We see what the government's actual consumption value is. Here we see the gross fixed capital formation. So in that is going to be, that's kind of like our investment there. Um, gross residential structures, non-residential structures, machinery and equipment, intellectual property, nonprofit institutions, capital formation, and then government's capital formation. So again, all of our different aspects, they're all looking at investment, profit firms, nonprofit firms, and government, all what they're doing in investment. We then have investment in inventories as its own category. And in this case here, our inventories were drawn down. So we had a negative investment in inventory. To finish off, exports, so how many goods, how many services we exported in dollars, and imports, how much we imported. Again, like I was saying, statistical discrepancy between our different estimates, our uncertainty with that, and what we get is our final value of GDP at market prices, and then the difference being our final domestic demand, or final GDP. So... There we go, bit of an example. Statistics Canada actually does collect all this. We can calculate GDP using our expenditure approach, utilizing the real values right here. And surprise, right? It's actually something that's done and done every quarter. So this is collected for most developed nations and published every quarter. Uh, we can also take a look at the income accounts. Uh, to be honest, they're just not as interesting. Uh, very similarly, we can also take a look at GDP by industry. So that is how much each industry contributed to our final demand, or sorry, our final output, our final domestic, uh, final domestic production. If you have any questions, of course, I already said this, but please feel free, comment below, post a D2L, or shoot me an email. Thanks. I hope this helps with uh, some of the questions and calculating that. Till next time.